pleased to welcome them here this morning to announce the package of financial reforms which the UK government has agreed for Wales. And this is the culmination of a year or years of hard work, I would say. Cross-party Silk Commission's report was published a year ago tomorrow, in fact. Um, I've been really encouraged by the way in which all four parties in the Assembly and many in the business community, our partners in Wales, have played their part to help bring about these important financial reforms. Indeed, the origins of the process go back even further, all the way back to 2008 when the Welsh Government established the Holcomb Commission to review our funding and fiscal levers. The Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister may have given us some of the headlines a few weeks ago, but what we will be getting today should provide a much fuller picture of the planned reforms. Before I hand over to Danny, I would like to pay tribute to the hard work that I know he has put in delivering this outcome today. He's a firm advocate for devolution and has proved to be a staunch ally throughout this process. So I'll hand over to you now, Chief Secretary. Good morning, and uh, Jane, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. And thank you for inviting us here uh, today. And it is, I think, um, a, a year tomorrow since we had the, uh, uh, the recommendations uh, of the uh, Silk Review. And let me join in uh, paying tribute to you for all of your efforts here to uh, work with the Treasury and with, with David and, and, and the Wales Office to uh, make sure that we have a good uh, detailed package uh, to uh, announce today. Because I think it's fair to say that since the formation 15 years ago uh, of the Welsh Assembly, it's been in a unique position and not necessarily always for the right reasons. It's been able to spend money to make laws, but has never had any control over how much it raises through tax. So Swansea Council, for example, has been able to <coughs> set taxes to determine its budget, but not the Welsh Government. Cardiff Council has been able to borrow to invest in capital projects, but not the Welsh Government. And of course, the Scottish Government has been able to vary income tax rates, but not the Welsh Government meaning that for too long, Westminster hasn't been treating the Welsh Assembly like an equal par partner. Last November, though, the Civil Commission recommended a much more mature relationship between our governments. And I have always been clear that I wouldn't allow a government response that fell short on delivering those aspirations. And I think, therefore, that today's detailed response to the Silk Commission represents a major step forward for Wales within the United Kingdom. That's why we will take on the Commission's recommendations to fully devolve business rates, to fully devolve stamp duty, to fully devolve landfill tax, and crucially, provide the Welsh Government with the power to create new taxes too, meaning that they will be able to oversee a tax system better suited to Welsh circumstances. We're delivering tax and borrowing powers to the people of Wales to help their nation flourish in partnership with the rest of the UK. This is a historic change for the Welsh Assembly. But of course, as well as providing new opportunities, these changes also bring new responsibilities. So I can announce today then that we will also be providing the Welsh Government with the tools they need to manage these powers effectively. A new Welsh Reserve will enable the Welsh Government to save tax revenues during the good years. Limited current borrowing powers will protect them should funding in the Reserve be insufficient. And by providing for a referendum on income tax, we will, uh, subject to a future decision of the Welsh Assembly, give the people of Wales the opportunity to decide if they believe that their Assembly should have responsibility over a substantial element of income tax. These new tax powers will be important also in relation to the Welsh Government's new borrowing powers. Last October, I made it very clear that if Silk recommended devolving revenue raising powers, and if Wales implemented them, then we would put in place new borrowing powers for Wales. By offering the people of Wales the power to raise taxes and the freedom to borrow responsibly, we're providing twin tools which can drive investment, rebuild infrastructure, and secure a more prosperous future. Wales is a proud nation with a rich history, and I hope our decisions today will inspire renewed growth and new thinking about how these new tools can be used to strengthen Wales in future. And let me just make one final point. These are decisions that demonstrate, once again, that all parts of the United Kingdom benefit from working closely alongside one another. And that the best option for all of the nations of Britain is for home rule within the United Kingdom. 
This is another demonstration that we are better together, and I welcome these changes wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danny. And before I bring in the Secretary of State for Wales, I would like to say I very much welcome the Chief Secretary's announcement this morning. I believe it represents a good deal for Wales and a big step forward for devolution. In addition from what we learnt earlier this month about the ability to borrow the devolution of stamp duty, land tax and landfill tax and legislation for a referendum on income tax, we now have a response to all 33 of Silk's recommendations. I'm pleased that non-domestic rates will be fully devolved to Wales. This is another important lever to support the economy. It will give us the same flexibilities to those already enjoyed by Scottish ministers. And over the coming weeks, we'll need to clarify the details of how the change will be implemented, and I look forward to working with the Chief Secretary on this. I'm also pleased to hear that in future, when the UK government plans to introduce a new tax in a devolved policy area, it will discuss with the Welsh Government whether that tax should also be devolved, again putting us in the same position as Scotland. The power for the Assembly to legislate with the agreement of the UK Government to introduce new taxes and associated tax credits is another important reform. This is a statement of confidence in the Welsh Government and the Assembly and opens up a new avenue for policy development in the longer term. I'm not going to pretend that the Welsh Government has got everything that we have been arguing for. As we've heard previously from the Prime Minister, direct long-haul air passenger duty will not be coming to Wales as part of the announcement. But I, I do believe that the Silk Commission and the Welsh Government put forward strong cases uh, in favour of the tax being devolved. It's al already been devolved to Northern Ireland, so I will continue to press this case. I'm very pleased to have confirmed that there will be a referendum of income tax devolution. Throughout the process, uh, my priority has been to ensure that the people of Wales should have the final say. Um, the form of income tax devolution offered to Wales wouldn't, won't allow us to vary rates independently, uh, but we will have the same arrangements as in Scotland, the so-called lockstep approach, which means we can't change one rate without moving all the others to the same degree. Of course, Silk also said that the issue of income tax devolution should be conditional on resolving the issue of fair funding. Well, last year, in this room, a month ago, our two governments agreed a joint statement <coughs> on financial reform. And that was an important stride forward towards securing a fairer funding settlement. I'm glad today, today's publication, again by the UK government, reiterates its support for that process. Because these are matters for a future. Assembly, the priority now uh, is to get the referendum on the statute book. I've always been clear that any new powers coming to Wales should be for a purpose, in order to help create jobs and support the economy, and I'm sure all ministers in both our governments share that view, to enable us to boost jobs and growth uh, and encourage the investment that we need. The document's only been published this morning, so clearly it's too soon to get into the details of what we'll be doing with the new powers. It's only right and proper that we develop our plans with care and in consultation with stakeholders. And I would again like to thank the business community and social partners for the way they've used their influence to support the silk reforms. Their interest and involvement in this process has been vital. It's about real issues that offer us a tremendous opportunity to boost growth and jobs, provide real help for our businesses and communities. So the early access to borrowing that was announced by the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister that we've achieved to help fund an enhancement of the MFO is hugely significant, of course subject to ongoing consultation. Extremely important to business, CBI Wales and indeed beyond Wales, CBI is number one priority for Wales. This year I've also had discussions with a range of business leaders in the housing and related sectors and they've emphasised to me what we could achieve through the reform of stamp duty. And I'm confident that we can make stamp duty and also landfill tax operate fairly, simply and efficiently. So the UK government's announcement that these taxes will be devolved to Wales is a first step in that process. So in terms of the way forward, it's taken quite a while to get this far. In some ways, this almost feels like an end in itself, but no, it's the beginning. Of course, 
it's just a beginning. I think the First Minister said when he received the news only a couple of weeks ago, this makes us equal partners in the United Kingdom. It's the start of a long and important programme of work. I'm looking forward to getting started. I'm very pleased to learn that legislation to implement reforms will be published before the end of the current session. The Parliament, of course, the Secretary of State, will be taking this forward means before uh, at the end of March. And, and of course, the UK government is working to pass the legislation before the next general election. So now that things are moving forward, we need to keep up the momentum. Still many practical details to resolve, timetables, methods for calculating budget offsets, in return for the devolved tax revenue, approach to be adopted for the full devolution of non-domestic rates. This will require, as we've achieved, close joint working between our governments. And I look forward to working with Danny and David over the coming months as we tackle the remaining issues, take this important work forward. This deal is good for Wales and good for the United Kingdom. It shows how much can be achieved by working together, how devolution can thrive in a spirit of genuine partnership. We've shared goals and shared priorities, both seeking a strong Wales and a strong union. And as the Chief Secretary said, we are indeed better together. I now would like to hand over to the Secretary of State for Wales. Deal. <coughs> Well, the object of my pleasure at Benny Gibi, but I'm a head of our previous scribble or previous scribble at the Trust to Sorba. I'm a head of our 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 Heddiw, rydym yn derbyn naill uh, ai yn llawn i'r neu'r rhannol 30 o 31. Uh, mae'r um, pwerau uh, ar iannol newydd uh, yn cynnwys datganoli trethu busnes a nomestig yn llawn, y gallu i greu trethu newydd uh, gyda chydinder llywodraeth uh, uh, Dernas Unedig ac offer i reoli pwerau treth newydd. Drwy'r pecyn o pwerau hwn, rydym yn rhoi cyfle i Lywodraeth Cymru i wneud y buddsoddiadau cywir yng Nghymru. Bydd y Llywodraeth Cymru nawr yn gallu ddydsoddi ar unwaith mewn adnewyddu selwaith fel yr uh, M4 ar uh, R5 yng Ngogledd Cymru. A, a mae'n rhaid ni ddweud, mae'n rhaid rwan i Lywodraeth Cymru fanteisio ar y cyfle yma i sicrhau tŵf a ffyniant y mae cymaint o'i angen uh, yng Nghymru. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's very good to be here this morning with the Chief Secretary to the Treasury and to uh, make uh, the announcement on the publication uh, of the government's response to the recommendations of the Silk Commission. And uh, this afternoon uh, in the House of Commons, I will be making an oral uh, ministerial statement which will enable members of Parliament uh, to quiz me further on the proposals uh, that we uh, have responded to. Um, you've already heard extensively from the, both the Chief Secretary and from uh, Jane Hutt uh, about the importance of this announcement uh, and the fact that in particular the income tax powers mirror those uh, of the Scottish settlement I think underline further the importance of all parts of this United Kingdom having equality in terms of fiscal powers uh, and underlining further as the Chief Secretary said that we are indeed better together. Uh, over the uh, years since the last general election uh, the Wales office with the support of the Treasury uh, has made uh, the uh, improvement of Wales' uh, infrastructure its top priority. The uh, powers that we have announced today, and that were the subject of my uh, written ministerial statement a couple of weeks ago, uh, underline the fact that we have now given to the Welsh Government uh, the tools to do the job of uh, improving uh, Wales' infrastructure, which uh, is, frankly, as the Prime Minister put it, uh, acting uh, uh, as a, a foot on the windpipe of the Welsh economy in terms of the much needed upgrade uh, to the M4. Uh, 
one particular issue I would like to highlight uh, is that of the uh, referendum uh, on uh, tax, uh, income tax bearing powers. Uh, as a Conservative, I believe very firmly in low taxation. Uh, so I, I would urge the Welsh Government, uh, as soon as reasonably possible, to trigger that referendum. And I can tell you here today that uh, the Conservative Party uh, in Wales will be c campaigning uh, very strongly uh, for that referendum to be triggered and for there to be a yes vote so that we can actually introduce a more competitive regime in terms of income tax in Wales. Um, we are extremely uh, keen too to see the uh, devolution of stamp duty land tax uh, utilised by the Welsh Government as a means of stimulating the property market in Wales. Uh, it's a sad fact that the Welsh property market is lagging behind the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, and I would very much hope that uh, the Welsh Government will now uh, not only be triggering uh, those powers in a way that will stimulate the market, but will also be looking at other ways to liberalise the property market uh, and maybe look in terms of the sort of deregulation that we're seeing at Westminster. I think that today uh, is a good day for Wales. Uh, it is giving huge potential to the Welsh Government uh, to take advantage of additional powers for the benefit of the Welsh economy and for the benefit of the people in work. Thank you very much.